Good evening. A Latin proverb originally states that still waters run deep. This is commonly taken to mean that a placid exterior hides a passionate or subtle nature. This proverb also carries the warning that silent people are sometimes extremely dangerous. But for the president's men, whether in public or under the cover of darkness, the watchful eye of the appointing authority is always lurking. There is always the push and pull between the president and his men. He started his job in the era of fifth president Michael Sata, may he so rest in peace, and now under president Ed Kalungu. For the last eight years or so, he has been the man driving the political desk and the political agenda in state house. But this man of late has been labeled trigger happy without respect for the law, indeed above the law. Simply put, Special Assistant to the President for Political Affairs, Kaiser Zulu, has been branded rog and extremely notorious. Mr. Zulu, who is considered media shy, decides to open up on Costa with me, Costa, once on a special interview tonight. Kaiser Zulu, or specially known KZ, welcome to this show, and good evening. Uh, good evening, and thank you for having me, Mr. Costa. When we announced on social media earlier on that you were coming on to the show, people warned that I should come with a bulletproof vest uh, am i safe first of all and uh, what has decided you to to finally speak and break the silence Mr. first and foremost of course they are very safe as zambia is <laughs> very safe so yes. i don't need a bulletproof vest you don't need let's get straight into it really so much dirty water about you has passed under the bridge your conduct is under magnifying glass People describe you as a man who holds the presidency or the president who you serve under as captive. You're above the law. You're above President Edgar Lungu. Let me refer to just today's headline. Kaiser calls Lungu boy at State House. His word is final. And the paper says they're quoting State House sources. You have no respect, you know, for the president. Others also, especially political opponents, President Lungu, and just others are saying you're untouchable. The president cannot fire you. You don't want to resign over your conduct as described. Are you above the law? Do you disrespect the presidency and your boss so much? To the contrary, Costa. First, looking at the headline now, it's first laughable. Who does that? Who could do it? Certainly. They could, one person I could call boy, if at all he was president, that could be probably Shufia Tayani. Because uh, at times we refer to him as Maiche. Never at one point would I describe nor disrespect the president because he's my appointing authority and I don't take my job for jokes. Under President Sata, he was my traditional cousin. I served him at State House twice, first as a chief political analyst and later as he is permanent secretary. No one would even point out a day that even if the president threw a joke at me, I would respond with a joke, being his traditional cousin. It is normal. It can happen, right? But always I would say, I've heard you, Excellency. And that is the nature I carry forward. That is my nature I carry forward. I don't take the opportunity to serve in the highest office for granted. Who is Kaiser Zulu anyway? He's just one human being among the 17 million Zambians. And it is a privilege. Therefore, I take it seriously and I don't joke with it. They say there's no smoke without fire, you know. Uh, KZ, why all of a sudden has the limelight come upon you? Like you've rightly put it, you were in, the, in, in what one would describe the political struggle in the opposition with Michael Sata before going into State House in 2011. And rightfully, like you put it, uh, others are now comparing that President Sata disciplined you by firing you out of State House. You served him twice. Are you abusing your authority? Do you find President Lungu weaker than President Michael Sata? No, to the contrary. We're both coming from the same school, the school of Michael Trufia Sata, men's forest in peace. Discipline was number one. But certainly, Costa, have you seen a dog battle at a stationary vehicle? No, do you see monkeys trying to pluck 
something that they cannot eat. Certainly those who are outside have got their tentacles everywhere to try and tarnish the image now. The point that should be put into context as well is that when a strong man is standing and he's got his other roots around him, to bring down such a man, you need to first start targeting the roots. It's like a tree. When you cut the stem, it will grow because it is still feeding from the soil. But when you cut the roots, then the tree will fall. Therefore, it is inconceivable that I would be willing to have these legs cut and let the opposition take over from, from President Lung. So are you saying that this is a campaign orchestrated by the opposition to tarnish the president through you? Certainly. If Kaiser Zulu left today, do you think if another strong man was in, they would let that strong man stay? So being a strong man of the president, how do you put a blame on the opposition? Let's take two incidents that you were recently involved in. One road accident with a school bus full of children. You are accused of beating up, you know, the driver. The most recent one, I think two days ago, uh, a dispute over uh, some piece of land. Again, you're accused of trespass and arson. Again, the list is endless. Beating up people at a name lodge in Kafue, you lock them up and so on and so forth. How do the opposition come in with us? Let's start with the incident of Lindhurst School, really. Um, the accident. How cruel can you be as a family man yourself, as a father, that you, you bash into people and you start brandishing them, you call cutters on innocent kids going to school? First and foremost, um, uh, of course, to what I'm going to express, number one, I mean, I'm a parent. I have children. And they have driven to school at the same time as those kids were being driven to school. Which parent would want to kill another man's children? If I was brandishing a gun, there were more than 40 people on the scene. Smartphones now is in each and everyone's hand. At least one would have captured a picture of me, either manhandling the driver, or indeed, beating up. But certainly coming into an accident, it's an unfortunate incident that happened due to carelessness. But further to that, I'm also waiting on the police to do a conclusive investigation and probably issue a statement since they had done an, uh, an earlier statement when the accident happened. But to the contrary, I, I feel so bad sir, that a careless driver unlicensed and named put the lives of those children in arms way. To demonstrate that, when that happened, I had to stand down from an early morning meeting to go and check on the kids at a named clinic where they were being attended to for tremor. Now, if I was at Kalis, where would I start going after those kids to see are they in good shape? Are they in good condition? In the meantime, when I went to that school, the driver who was driving that bus had already bought it from the sea. Because you're accused of beating him up and breaking his jaw. Uh, probably the police should do, present him to the public. They should present him to the public to say, oh, this is the man that was, uh, was beaten and he, his jaw was broken. To start with, if I broke your jaw, you can't talk. Can you, Oscar? You can't. Now, the most significant part about that accident is, number one, I found that the driver's license that was hanging in the bus belonged to someone else. The person who claimed to be the owner of the bus isn't the owner. Another TV station, I was running a, a story concerning the same accident. But when this man was on TV live claiming that he's the owner of the bus, to the contrary, he's it's the a, owner of the school who hired a public service vehicle to ferry children from Zaf Air Base to the school. Now, our investigations independently have revealed that, number one, 
the name that is uh, mentioned in the police statement is the wrong name of the driver that was driving the, the bus. Secondly, when we went back to the scene to verify as to what exactly had happened, another driver showed up. Is the police aware of this information? Because they gave a statement that is a bit different, accusing you of being the cause of, of the accident. I'm waiting for them to do the correct thing. Mm. Are you, inti are you intimidating them? No. I'm a Zambian, just like any Zambian. We are equal before the law. I also expect the law to treat me fairly. In, you, in, in your words, KZ, what transpired on that fateful morning? That fateful morning, I was just not too far from my house, actually. When I just turned into 3rd Street, I decided to overtake a bus. And this bus driver decided to also overtake within my overtaking. Now, there was a claim that you wanted to turn. Certainly, you can't turn when you've already passed where you're supposed to turn. Now, if I were to hit the bus, certainly my vehicle was going to be damaged on the front part of it. Right? But my damaged part is on my left, and the bus didn't go into uh, uh, the drainage. It was my vehicle that went into the drainage on the right. There was no shake-up on the bus. So you claim that witnesses, there were, there were people there. Um, others claim you, you, you were driving in the opposite direction of oncoming cars. Hence, you hit into, into, into the car. A most common question uh, that could be asked, Costa, uh, you overtake a car from which angle or from which side? Is it on the left or the right side of the vehicle? Which, which Definitely which, it's on the right. On the right. So when you're overtaking, are you overtaking using a, long, a wrong lane? These are questions that those that think they've got a different view should be answering. Maybe there is another law that allows us to overtake overhead. I, I think that challenge of the nitty gritty of what happened, if that is a road traffic accident, um, the police are still investigating. I think that is the official uh, conclusion where we can get it from. Uh, uh, where, where are we as far as investigations from your end? Did you report this matter to police? Were you reported to police? Certainly I had to go and give a statement uh, to, to, to the police. Yeah, I'm yet to hear what side of the story, if the driver is uh, available. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, that driver is not available. So according to you, the story is that the person who was involved in that was an unlicensed yes. and was not the driver of that bus. The name belongs to someone else. Well, it's the, the name driver. on the driver's license. It's someone else. Much as that may be explained, for those watching out there, the Kaiser Zulu that is before me this evening is one for a parent of a child at Lindhurst School, is a villain, is heartless, in that you cause trauma to young kids by brandishing guns, by insulting people, and so on, really. Back again, as a father, does that conduct... Uh, even if you were wronged, would you support that conduct? How, why did you behave in that manner? To the contrary, mm -hmm. uh, Acosta, there are videos that fly around us and when an accident happens. And uh, I think it took me probably maybe five minutes to get out of the vehicle. If you take note on, on that drainage, my vehicle had slid into the drainage. Therefore, as a driver, I was at the bottom of the car, not literally. But inside, first and foremost, I have to take out myself or push out myself out of the car because that's an accident you may, never know it may blow. When I went out of the car, I checked on the kids. The kids were fine. They were being loaded into another car going to school. I came back to the scene to secure my articles in the car. At what point did I brandish a gun? At least one should just come forward and say, oh, hey, we've got a picture here, man. <laughs> this is the type of a gun you actually uh, produced. The owner of the school actually accuses me that I was pointing a gun at him at the scene of an accident. The question is, 
Where did he come from? Where was he? Was he also in the bus? These are pertinent questions to be asking those that want to accuse others. Well explained, you know, on, on this instance, but scandals really keep on coming at one name. It's Kaiser Zulu, day in, day out, it's Kaiser Zulu. The next issue, obviously, which is rife now, is a piece of land, a protected argument over uh, plot 371 and 370 in Mikango Barracks. Another uh, Mr. Adamson Piri accusing you of going to trespass and cause arson. We've seen you know, uh, media reports that uh, you are threatening somebody's life over a piece of land that does not belong to you. Do you have proof that uh, this land belongs to you? Where has this tiff and rango come from? Costa, have you been to school and you read? First and foremost, on this offer before I give you, I show you the title. What date does it say? This is 17th of December 2013. 2013. Mm. This is the title to that piece of land. This is plot uh, 371. Exactly. Mm. Now, the most interesting part, mm. cost, is that plot 30070 mm. is faced together. But, but, but this, of course, is not in the name of Kaiser Zulu. Of course. Mm. It is in the name of which institution? Open Projects. That's my company. Mm. Do I have a right to own, to own land as a Zambian? Or does the company has its like right to own property? If it does, if someone trespasses on it and fences it off, and pretends to have applied for the land in 2017, should the law be certainly applied and fairly on me, or indeed the company that owns the land? So upon, let's get to the cracks of the story. Has this particular land in question, which you show title for, been encroached on? It's been faced off. By yourself? By the same Mr. Anderson Peer. And in resolving, in resolving this matter, did you go again in the company of thugs or so-called friends from the pictures we see driving over whatever was planted there, torching houses of his workers and employees, firing shots in the air, according to the recent stories we've seen this evening, that you were firing in the air with young kids again on this particular land. And he claims, he's been on TV, that you are threatening his life. He's a, what I could say is that he's a crazy man. To the best of my knowledge, as a law-abiding citizen, in August this year, I reported this man to the police. He was arrested in the company of Ministry of Lands officials. And as we speak, what I know is that he was released on bond. Why would the police do that? Was it an instruction from me? I laid the complaint which was genuine, I produced the documents, and they moved in. But certainly, when one goes to TV and says uh, he's got a, a title, he who alleges that he's, I'm, I'm actually threatening his life must prove it. I've never met him in his life. He should show title that is God for that piece of land. He should also show cause. Why? He decided to fence off my property. Who gave him the right? How the story actually, how we came to discover that he's actually encroaching or trespassing on my property. Ministry of Lands officials informed one of my peers to say, you don't need to worry. There's a man that Mr. Zulu has appointed to actually process this land on his behalf. And when I queried, we discovered that it was in connivance with some of the officials. When cornered, that's why they mentioned the name Mr. Piri to be at the center of trying to get that land from him. So how, how, how do you intend to resolve these issues amicably? You've been to the police, are you taking it to court? Because again, from all these matters, granted, 
a case that you explain, and, and I'm glad that you're on this program so that you can give your side of the story. Because it seems from what we, we, we hear and read that your only solution is to solve problems through the barrel of a gun. There was no gunfire. There's a barrack nearby, at least even the, the, the barrack would have responded if they had any gunfire. It is an allegation. That's what I'm saying. If at all, someone goes to a piece of land where there's no bone, even starts cultivating, who would you shoot at when he's not there? Did you burn the houses of his workers or did you instruct anybody to torch? Because these are the allegations and we're told a case is being built up for you with quite a number of witnesses that they saw you and you brandished guns and instructed that these houses be burnt. The question is, where were they? Where were they? Do they live on that land? If not, where are they getting that evidence that they saw me torching? And where are their houses built on that piece of land? There's one structure which is still standing where one family lives. And I let them live there because they act like my caretakers. So which people are they referring to? Which houses did I torch? And who were living there? And these people that live on the said piece of land know you as well and you have a relationship as your caretakers? In fact, at a time that I came to discover that Mr. Piri was trying to take my land or steal it, I found that he had actually he had even started paying these people because that settled there illegally. He started paying them, saying, no, you should be the one to cultivate on my behalf. So the relationship between myself and the Mr. Banda is based on finding him sitting there and telling him, you know what, this is my piece of land. He is too appearing on the list of those that gave statements to the Zambia Police Service, I believe against Mr. Peer. And I've let him live there. I've not evicted nobody. So the story is fine. Back to the issue of all these allegations. People out there are beginning to believe that then with all these things you do not fit to be in State House to politically advise the President well and now with all the problems that are happening people i'm sure you've heard this that the president himself is a good man the president means well but the people around him kaiser zulu being among the top arrogant trigger happy playboy how does this make you feel really uh, do, do, uh, how do you react to the fact that, are you competent to be in state house. Mrs. Wu. Um, talking about my competence, if at all anyone would want to question my competence, ask those that have lost power before and those that have tried to win an election. The competence about me not necessarily advising the president, I think, in my opinion, supersedes me. From 2011, I was at the call of elections to unseat the then ruling party. The most difficult, probably, election I've ever participated in is the 2015 one, when we lost the president in 2014. It was an election that was clearly tilting the other way, because the other player had been on the scene for some time campaigning year in, year out. But certainly, we carried the day. But it was not just my making. Of course, I say also thank you to the Zambian people who responded positively. It's not just about Kaiser Zulu to move. The question is, you may be asking, why is it that there are five 
advisors. Who formed the presidency? Who formed the presidency? And why is your name exactly. the odd one out, KZ? You, you ask yourself a very interesting question that myself and the public would want to find out. Exactly. Why don't we hear the same happening with aid economics, aid legal, aid... Why you? For instance, recently in Kaoma, where there was some shooting and so on, you heard of allegations me being in Kaoma. In the meantime, I was a mile away from Zambia. The other question is, why would they mention me? Why not mention uh, the economic advice? Because I'm attached to politics. And therefore, I don't rule out political attachment to each and every allegation that comes. For instance, the next insult you hear that is directed at President Lungu is that he doesn't want to fire me. And that will be, oh, Akainda said so. Or oh, Chishimba Kambuya said so. Why not ordinary Zambians? Even ordinary Zambians now are questioning. And let me add further for the sake of the Zambians. Really, Keza, people feel that you've taken the presidency and the president for granted to the extent that you're also described as the chief middleman of State House, cutting deals on behalf of your boss, cutting deals on behalf of State House. You're accused of moving with sacks and sacks of dollars and, and all currencies sharing with the presidents. This is what you des described as, that you don't give advice. Yours is just to cut deals and later on splash this money in Chicago's or brandish guns and torch people's houses. Is this politics again? I'm not in charge of uh, economics to start with. I'm not a dealer either. Outside state house, I'm a businessman. Let one man adduce evidence that even one little outfit, my company has got one business with a government. I can simply declare interest to say, I'm going to probably put in a tender for, for that contract. Are but you a middleman taking, whether it's the Chinese or whatever, taking sacks of cash into State House? Let those that are, uh, uh, accuse me of such adduce evidence. Simple. When you say this man is corrupt, adduce the evidence that supports your allegation. Do you have lives of a cat? They say a cat has nine lives. You survived President Sutter's knife how many times? I've got only one life. You survived him. He appointed you chief political analyst, permanent secretary. Again, like I'm saying, people at every twist and turn say he should be fired. How many more lives does Kaiser have? What are the reasons, first and foremost, within the confines of my professional life with State House? Mm -hmm. What are the reasons? Do I do the job right? Oh, probably maybe what they should even know from now onwards is that the Kaiser's got no limit to working. He sleeps two, three hours a day. That is the Kaiser that I know and I wish the Zambian should know. Oh, he's a family man too. What do your children make of this? Your family? Really, it's everyday headlines like this. Everyday Kaiser's beaten people with a gun. What, what, what kind of example? Or, or maybe, if you call this fake news, what does this do? What do you explain to your family of these allegations, of the fact that you constantly appear for being notorious and infamous? For instance, there is an allegation that... Uh, had locked up or blocked people to leave a certain lodge somewhere. Most of the time, every weekend, I'm in the company of my children. It is the time that I used to rebound with them. Because most of the time, I'm away. Now, which father will get out of the car and tell the children to stay there, start firing guns? Isn't that going to be traumatizing to the children? Which father does that? Would I want to do that to my children? These are the questions that 
Zambians who accuse me of such should be asking themselves. Oh, for instance, you go to a public place and you are with your family. It is only easy if someone wants to take a picture of you. Humbly asks you, Costa, I want to have a picture with you. Can I take a picture of you? But certainly will not, someone will not just start taking pictures of you in a spy mode. As a father, someone is taking pictures of my children. I will have to ask, why do you want to take pictures of my children? Certainly, my privacy is important too. Yes, I'm a public officer, but my family is private. Therefore, other people's rights do not extend in my privacy. That should be known as a fact. Well explained as, as a family, you know, man. I've had interactions, you know, with you since I think early 2009 into 2011. There are some people, uh, let me not speak for myself, but there are some people, especially within the political realms, We've heard now NDC President Dr. Shimbakam really accusing you of changing, accusing you of being corrupt with the power of money and the position. Would you agree to an extent that the Kaiser that you're portraying now, which is the true you, has been corrupted with the fact that you've got so much wealth and so much power in your hands that you're abusing it and you're losing the true virtues and values for which you people in the PF founded and went into power in 2011? To the contrary, the figure you're referring to, um, I don't know if I should refer to him as a doctor, a Chishimba Kambui. These are people who pick up phones and call to say, Dechula. They only see the difference when they're outside. When Shimakambui was inside, he never saw the different kinds. Certainly, I have changed in his eyes because he's in the opposition and I'm inside. Sir, even you, if you were the political advisor today, do you think Akainde Ichilema will call you for breakfast in the morning? Indeed, Jack Mumbi will say, let's go have a, a boat ride together. Will that happen? I have to label a villain. And this is their campaign. But for me, my focus is never shaken. It's just a strategize and win an election. Your position is not one that we should underestimate in that obviously, apart from advising the president on the political strategy and the political climate, I want to bring your attention Kaiser Zulu, are you not worried on this recent culture of violence that plagues our election atmosphere? Kawama, you give an example, lives being lost, Sesheke, Pangas and everything. This culture where you people in the campaign trail on, on both sides, I'm talking about PF and UPND, are moving with guns, Pangas and machetes. As political advisor, is this the future of politics that you want to see? Is this the strategy? Certainly not. No one has ever folded a gun and put it in the ballot box. No one has ever folded a machete and put it in the ballot box for another opponent or the other to win an election. It's always a competition of minds and policies. And the politics that one I want to see and embrace, that I've embraced, are those of strategies that win an election. Are not violent. Are you, as political advisor, fronting these policies to foster peace, to foster development? Because I don't want to sound like a broken record. It seems from the PF end, you are one of those that is always brandishing these guns. It's Kaiser sponsored pangas and whatever. We're not saying the other camps are clean. We've seen how this battle has been. Let me ask you one critical question. As political advisor, are you doing anything? Does it not? really give you headaches that people are talking about the so-called dialogue and that our political atmosphere is one described of tension 
For example, as you look towards 2021 as a political strategist, what comes into your mind? Does it not scare that if we do not address and nip this in the bud, this country might turn into another Kenya or another Congo or Rwanda? God forbid it won't go there, Costa. In the recent past, you've noted that when there's a by-election, the leadership of the Patriotic Front has restrained movement of cadres from one region to the other. And that is a plus on the part where I sit. Well, if we talk about violence, violence has just got its own origin, Costa. If you may allow me to go into it. I was in the opposition for 10 years with President Sad. We started with one MP, with one council. From time to time, we would want into alliances. Another political party that we had gone into alliances with is the United Party for National Development. We had the ruling party, which was MND. Each and every time we can go to history, that Patriotic Front fielded a candidate and UPND were not fielding a candidate against MMD, there were never violence. It is a fact that each time UPND were either in a contention with PF or MMD, there would be violence. For me, I'm not branding that political party to be violence, but that is the history they were understanding. So you accuse the UPND of being the violent party? It is a violent party. And the PF? The PF, the PF is not a violent party. But of course, the of, of, front, of, of, of course, certainly. Of course, KZ in the recent past, your party and its cadres have been caught up on the wrong side of the law in certain instances. And the core that is there. Um, and I'm glad that you give this history. What would you say, again, as political advisor with the cause, that if you, uh, I'll call on the presidency, because you're part of it, that if you people were really genuine and serious about ending this violence, it takes only one serious instruction from President Lungu to say enough is enough and we will not condone this. Surely I can even say further, with the power that we see you having, Maybe one phone call from Kaiser Zulu and this violence would stop. Who would I, who would I call? The UPND? The cadres of the PF. Oh, certainly. Mm. I'll give you um, a, a perfect example of a by-election in Kafue. It was all calm and easy. Came 1,200 hours. I named the figure. Started wielding Pangas, including guns, beating up people at polling stations. Was that the Patriot Front? In the end, the story is there to see or to read. He was arrested for it. Do was you, that the Patriot Front? Surely, there are many instances where we can look at how the PF and the UPND have clashed. Sesheke is one of them. Obviously, these matters have led to dismissal of police in Ron, in Luansha again. There are all these allegations uh, by Chimbakam, William, the NDC, that you went, beat up cadres, fired guns, and so on. But let me ask it to you this way, Kaiser Zulu. Do you own guns yourself? Every citizen has got a right to buy and own a firearm. It's for your own security or for hunting. You may choose what you want. You refer to me as being above the law. I've appeared before the court of law and allegation that I wanted to shoot someone or kill someone. At Christmas Hotel. At Christmas Hotel. In Okavinda Lejun. Exactly. Mm. Appearing before the court of law does that entail I'm above the law? Or I subjected myself. Do you them. do you own guns? Yes, I do. You own guns. Owning a gun obviously has its specific rules and regulation and the Firearms Act. I'll ask you another question. Have you ever 
fired a gun at innocent people? Never. Have you ever fired a gun to protect yourself? Yes, I have. Which incidents was this? For instance, there are the two military officers who the police actually are arrested. They actually drove to my house. There are two targets, myself and former President Rupia Banda. Was it necessary for me to fire with these trained marksmen or to let me die? Is your life under threat or is it you with the guns that you own that is putting the lives of the innocent public members at threat? It is actually my life that is under threat. Why? Because you've, In stepped addition, on, you've stepped on too many people's toes or you've created so many enemies? When you manage an election, sir, mm -hmm. and it is successful mm -hmm. to your credit or to other people as a unit, unit's credit, who would want to see you alive? Who would want to see you alive? You're a stumbling block for them to ascend to power. With what you describe and the current status quo, really, what then are you saying, Mr. Political Advisor, in terms of the state of our democracy? That it's one that has deteriorated to a gun campaign culture, to one where every citizen, because it's our right, we should all begin to move with firearms? To the contrary. To the contrary. It doesn't have to go to there. First and foremost, we could ask the authorities that issue licenses, how many people own, or probably an audit can be done. If you start projecting corruption, corruption, corruption every day, how many people are corrupt? Recently, we've heard of the 48 hours, but who got the blame? The president. So, my take on that is that it is a perception that is being built to paint us black for them to come in and pretend to be cleaning it up. If you are being painted black, what is your take on the fact that the civil society organizations, the opposition political parties are being denied they are th their freedoms, their right to assemble and their freedoms to speak out? And I ask this because 10 years you spent in the opposition. I'll give you an example of the 2008 elections which you were part of. The PF were beaten. No sooner had the elections finished a month later, you were back on the campaign trail with one Michael Chilfiasata. The MMD and Rupia Banda gave you that freedom. Mr. Political Advisor, again, is it your strategy that your opponents must be denied their constitutional right to interact with the Zambian people against their democratic freedoms. You have to be strategic and tactical in applying yourselves politically. To Number stop one. them from having rights? To the contrary, mm. Costa. When we're in opposition, we're tactical. If there is one common letter that I know to draft, was that to the police and giving them ample time to respond. Our opposition today, they want to wake up today and demonstrate tomorrow. The records are there to show. We would always give notice. Meaning, we're subjecting ourselves to the Public Order Act. That is the tact we had. Did we appear on ZNBC? No. Could we go to any other radio station and broadcast live? No. But is that is is are, are you justifying are tact. you justifying the wrongs of the MMD that now the things you went through you should subject the opposition that the, the, the opposition must never be given a chance to has go the, onto the, public media which is the taxpayers' money? Has the law changed? Has the law changed? 
But the current law does not deny them. Anyway, you give an it example. Doesn't, it, is it, doesn't, it, it doesn't deny, deny them. Deny them to go into ZNBC. It doesn't deny them to protest. Exactly. Mm. It doesn't deny them to talk. But certainly, mm. law and order must be maintained. You can't allow anarchy to take root. How do you explain situations where they've been given, the police have been given notification, and go ahead has been given that an opposition party will hold a rally here, and you come and cancel it last minute because the president needs to hold a rally? So, proceedings. Not that the president wants to hold a rally. All the time it's been the president is scheduled to be here on the 14th, probably. And the opposition also say, we want to be there on the 14th. Who takes precedence? Who takes precedence? The notice has been given by the state. What about you planning in retrospect when you know that the opposition are scheduled to be there and you're pushing that the president will come on this date? We don't, we don't do that. Is that strategy? We don't do that. Is that strategy? No, no, no. no. We don't do that, Cost. We plan you, according. When you know they're supposed to book you know, aircraft with ZAF, you book, Kaiser Zulu books all of them now. Oh. <laughs> to start with, who should be on the state security aircraft? Mm. Every German jack? Is that what you're saying? We should do. There are aircrafts all over hangars that are private. Are you saying we should subject the president's safety to the same aircraft that our kind Ichilema uses so, to be used by so, the president? So, so, so to answer my question, your, your answer, even this particular coming Friday, just yesterday we saw Inspector General of Police issuing a warning. Are you saying, Kaiser Zulu, that we should be living in a country where citizens cannot speak out, citizens cannot voice out. This is a country where now the opposition and the civil society is next to existence because th 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 their freedoms have been curtailed. How people miss the days of one Michael Sutter, probably this time may he so rest in peace, probably walking to Zesco with I don't know what, a bill or something. When there was no fuel, Michael Sutter would walk with an empty container and nobody would arrest him. Why, can, why can't Shimba come? We're going to stock on the market today and buy fish when Michael Sutter would freely walk on Kaya Road with Guy Scott and yourself in the background. Get to the market with good intentions, Oscar. Is buying fish not, not a good not intention? To call, not to cause anarchy. For instance, a man dies, you've got a genuine cause for an ordered procession to the graveyard. On your way, you decide, no, 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 no. This is supposed to be a show. You turn a procession into an anarchy. How would you expect the law to respond to such type of behavior? We sh should be calling a spade a spade. Are the police receiving instructions from you within the political structures? Never. Because you need to let them operate independent. Never. Have you never made any phone call to say arrest these cadres or, never. or punish them or lock them up? Never. 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 Kaiser Zulu, finally, of all the allegations, we can go on and on tonight to look at whether I call them scandals or fake news or allegations. Are you saying that all these accusations, not even one, Kaiser Zulu is a clean man as KK's handkerchief? If Kaiser Zulu is such scandalous, there are laws in this country, Cost. Kaiser Zulu is not the law. It's before the law. If anyone accuses him... Kaiser Zulu is in power with a very high position in this country. It doesn't matter. How many ministers have gone to court? Including myself. On allegations. How many? I bet those that I think they can come in, they would even allow their relative who's in the village to be questioned by the police. 
So at this particular point in time, there's nothing when you reflect that for those watching tonight, as a public servant, as a leader serving the Zambian people, that you, you are probably remorseful for in one way or the other, as a human being. Costa, when you sit and reflect, you realize you're not a saint. I'm not the first political advisor this country will ever have. Neither will I be last. I have a conscience that drives my brain. I say sorry when I know I am wrong. Really? Does, I stand, does Kaiser ever say sorry? I stand my ground mm. when I know this allegation is false mm. and therefore it deserves to be dismissed with a contempt. I don't just have a future. I need also to look at my children's and my family's future. Why would I be thinking about the future? I want to be remembered and not to be insulted even in my death. So again, when you look at all these things, there's nothing that pains you which you say, maybe I would have done this better. Or that makes you basically remorseful to the Zambian people or even the presidents. Because at the moment, there are lots of people who feel you're bringing ridicule and embarrassment to the office that you serve. It is the purpose of those that wish I should be remorseful and therefore leave my president naked. When there's no rain, others even mention Kaiser Zulu should do something. When there's Lord Shady, they say no, Kaiser Zulu should do something. What am I supposed to do? Real things are before us. But we ignore the truth we want to adopt imaginations. As a nation, we need first to reconcile with our conscience. And when we do, then our minds and our well-being will